Hey, live from New York. It's uh, Friday night. Monday's child is full of grace. Tuesday's child is fair of face. Wednesday's fa uh, child is, uh, has far to go. Thursday's child isn't going to see a judge until Monday. Don't drink and drive tonight, anybody. Hopefully, hopefully you're within your faculties. We're going to get back now into the uh, final part of these multi-category tags. And from the uh, prior two, you can see ran into a speed bump at the end, but uh, I did take a look back again, and uh, I think I found a solution. So now, um, they're dependent on each other, some of these uh, these BOMA master format um, categories and, 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 and these uh, tags. So um, yeah, they're, they're dependent on each other in some cases. Now this, for, for sake of argument, this one reported a lot of the parameters of this chair that indeed were, 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 were programmed in. It reported the assembly code. It re reported the, the family type. Um, and what it didn't do was report the manufacturer or the cost. And we didn't get the question mark. So now, I just want you to understand that I'm using a text from 2018 with the software from 2020. Now, it's important to note that because of the feedback that the, uh, the manufacturer of the software platform gets from the users of the platform in the industry sectors. And then they manipulate the code and change the coding so that it, it conforms more to the wishes of the customer. And in business, that's what you should be doing. It's a very good business practice as a matter of fact, hanging on your, 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 your company's wall is a mission statement. We're conforming to the customer's wishes. All right, now, customer's not necessarily always right, but you understand what I mean. All right, so there was the speed bump that I ran into, but it doesn't excuse the uh, behavior of the uh, project managers it, by any stretch of the means. So, shame on you. Now, It wanted us to add the uh, manufacturer and the cost parameter, not the assembly code cost, family name, and model. But, again, you will need to add mo more than just those two tags if it's a reporting parameter. And we're going to get into parameters next. And they're the, they're the, re they're the power. Those are the powerful items that are going to drive this project. It's going to take, a, well, I'm sorry, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? A picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, and it, it, it'll speak. It's art, architecture, articulation. The articulator. Anyway, that's a whole other story. That's Monday. Anyway, so um, we saved this tag. If you remember from the last um, exercise, we created the tag, we saved it. We, well, we loaded it into the, to the project and we saved it. And uh, it asked us to take this chair, but it said that um, when the tag is placed, you'll see a question mark indicating that this element has no predefined value for either manufacturer or cost. Um, but listen, it's uh, it's 3.52 and the project manager hasn't come back from the lunch yet. He's most likely, he, he or she's not coming back to the office. so. The building is going to, the building is open 24 hours. We can sit here all, all night and, and get our work done. Not the work that they want us to do, but the work that we want to do, right? So uh, we don't have to rush right now. Um, tomorrow morning when they get in the office, you know, we have to, you know, act nervous, right? When they come around, just act nervous. Be nervous. Be nervous. You're not going to have, you don't have to act nervous. Just be nervous. Because you know they're, they're volatile. They're, uh, they're unpredictable. Because um, they yield the pink slip pen. And, and they don't know who to keep, who not to. Most of them, right? How many of you, Matt, that really don't know who to keep and who to let go? And then they, they'll spend from cradle to grave that way. Generation upon generation upon generation upon generation. Doing the same thing, right? So you, you see it. You see it, how it's coming now. I mean, you see all these companies fall by the wayside. It's happening right now. Thanks the Lord. I, I was able to see it in my lifetime. You know, if I would have went to my grave and not seen some justice be administered, administered in the field, I would be really angry. But I can rest in peace now, now that I see um, the call 
it, it's much more satisfying, gratifying, knowing that, indeed, whew, and I thought I was nuts. Okay, so, whew, we got through that. All right, so now, we got this question mark that pops up. Now, this is really, truly really cool. This is where it gets really cool. So get your coffee, get your propeller cap on, um, put that gentleman or that lady in the corner with a dunce cap on, and let them all go out drinking, let them all go out to dinner, and we got work to do. Keep your nose to the grindstone, blinders on. This is a thoroughbred race. This class is for three-year-olds, I told you. Three-year-olds. So if you select this uh, tag, you'll see that the, uh, the tag uh, parameter values pops up. But now, notice that you could manually enter in the data, but that's not what we want to do. It should have been done for us already from the manufacturer when we installed the damn chair into the, into the, into the model, right? You know, I received, um, uh, if, I, if I went through the trouble, uh, went to, of going to a manufacturer's website for a submittal and, and, and took all the specifications from the manufacturer's website or, or however way they got the uh, specifications to me. And I indeed had a Kobe compliant model from the same manufacturer. Do you think I want to have to plug in this data? Absolutely not. Um, rejected. Just like your submittals may be rejected. There's absolutely no reason why you can't reject a submittal from the manufacturer, being that you're the one that's buying it for the stakeholders. Shit rolls downhill. So, that being said, I demand that that be the case. But in the interim, let's put on a bunch of different hats. I can't change the prefix or the suffix, and that's going to bother me. Because if I plug in these values, you'll find that this happens. Hold on. So let's just say this beautiful, plush, luxurious chair we picked up at that luxurious store over at the dollar store. You are changing your type parameter. This could affect many elements. Continue? Yes. So let's just say we went down for this luxurious project that we're working on. We went down to the dollar store and got this luxurious chair. It was, uh, and the cost was $19.99. We had to assemble it ourselves. And we had my screwdrivers too. But notice, I'll say it, irregardless of the fact, I'm not going to use regardless. Irregardless, if I type in the, the, the currency, the currency symbol, I didn't say dollar sign, I said currency. The, uh, the note, if I type in the note, it, it, it won't display. So, let's just leave that the way it is for now. Now, let's double click on the tag and it'll bring us back into the family editor dialog box or the family editor to edit the family. And let's take another look at this. I already did it, but um, if you select a tag uh, and you, I shouldn't say you select a tag because this file is the tag. If you select the label, you, you'll see that I put in a prefix of a, of a, a note. I put in a note. I put in a yen, a Israeli shinkel, uh, Iraqi dinar. Uh, I put in a ruble, a Mexican peso. What else can I put in? A Canadian dollar. What else? Uh, a Polish Slotsky. <laughs> you know what I mean, man. <laughs> you know what I mean. This is the international brotherhood of uh, sisterhoods. So now, same story, right? Same story. Uh, you, can, you can only change the suffix and the prefix of the sample values um, in the edit label or the, uh, yeah, the category parameter edit label dialog box within the family, uh, within the family editor. Once it's in the model as a tag, and you try that, you're not going to be able to do that. It has to be back into the edit family mode or program or application, right? Uh, plug in. All right, so again, I'm, I'm, I know it's taking long for me to, to convey this, and I'm 
you're doing this on one take, right? Uh, I'm not sitting there and analyzing it until way, way, way after the fact. And I can't wait till I walk and see um, the, my behavior when I had the battering ram coming through my front door. <laughs> yeah, I, I can only imagine how I was how I was appearing on camera when the battering ram was coming through the front door. I'm not even going to tell you that story. You have to go f f uh, ask someone else. It was five of them, I think. All right, well, if that's what it takes to calm me down, then I guess that's what it took. But I'm well within my faculties. Lord knows. All right, so I'm not going to go off on a tangent on, on memories because they're still fresh. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere, whether you like it or not. All right, so, yeah, that's important, right? So now, once that parameter's in there, if I load it into the project, it's going to ask me to override existing values. And sure enough, you see, it did add the prefix to, or the, the uh, unit, or the, uh, that's what I'm looking for, the, the, um, the unit of what it is. 19.99 uh, is a general number. It's not currency. Now it's currency. Right? Current. It's current. All right, so that alleviates the, uh, the speed bump, the senior moment from the prior exercise. Um, okay, so the change parameter dialog box would open with that question mark if I went back, 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 forward, forward, forward. Back, 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 forward, 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 back, back, back. The change parameter values dialog box opens if you click on the, the, the uh, question mark. And it's, now it's not doing it for me. It wants, to, it wants me to get angry. It wants me to get frustrated. I went probably back too far. Oh, wait, you know what? That's because I'm not there. Yeah, the, you see the move and the question mark are two separate entities. So you have to be right in there to grab it. You may have to zoom in. You may have to re-zoom. All right, so not to go cuckoo birds on you, but yeah, the change parameter values dialog box opens. This dialog box is used only when a tag has multiple parameters assigned to a single label. Not necessarily true, right? We had multiple parameters assigned to this tag. And when we selected the multi-category tag, to tag the chair family, the Viper chair, well, what happened? We got only a partial listing of the parameters that were assigned, and we didn't get the question mark. So we still could have entered in the values in the, in the chair over here, on the, uh, the properties palette, right? Um, but I didn't want to do that, right? I wanted to find out why. Um, and now we have found out why. So let's just, um, let's just continue on. This dialog box is used only when a tag has multiple parameters assigned to a single label. Otherwise, you would usually be able to type a value directly into a tag. Enter values for both manufacturer and cost, then click OK. You'll get a dialog box stating that you're changing a type parameter that could affect many other elements. Click Yes and then OK to accept the change. As you hover your mouse over the other elements, over other elements in this view, you'll notice the same behavior as with other tags. Elements that have predefined values will show the tag filled in while elements without values will have question marks. Add a few more tags and you can begin to see some of the versatility of the multi-category tag. Now what I really wanted to do um, before getting into dimensions was open up a wall section and find a, a sample file that has all the material parameters and their identity data uh, pro already, already programmed in so that we can look at the layers of the, of the walls and, and even associate some, maybe some costs to them. But I, I, I think that that may be an exercise for you and I to do offline uh, as, a, you know, as we continue along with our hobby. Um, because again, this is where these tags are going to play a powerful part because we talked earlier, all these, these tags uh, can be customized, customized. And uh, when we get into the mechanical engineering aspect of the CMP aspect of it, we'll go further with this. But just hold tight, hang tight, understand the fundamentals of it, and uh, we're, we're going to continue along. Lots of uh, data we can extract from this, right? So let's just not bog ourselves down in, in, in getting too granular, because then that's a problem. 
All right, so let's just leave that at that. Um, I'll, I'll just give you one more, uh, one more little bit of an example. Let's go to this chair. And like I said, if we were to go to edit type, and then we were to go into manufacturer, and let's put in, um, how about Huffman Coos? And let's put in a uh, cost. Um, this chair costs $8,000. And watch, I'll put in the, uh, the dollar sign here. $8,000 for this chair from Huffman Coos. And uh, yeah, manufacturer and a description, I'm gonna hit apply. Again, we didn't get the currency symbol, but we got the manufacturer and the uh, cost. But again, do we really wanna be doing that? And rewind the video to see why we don't. And I think it's a relatively good explanation of what's going on in the real world. Um, utilizing uh, real projects from past experience. Now, um, we're going to be getting into adding dimensions. Again, uh, I can give you a million real-world scenarios as to why you need dimensions in the uh, office uh, from a design standpoint and from a manufacturing fabrication standpoint. So just hold tight, and um, we're, getting, uh, we're getting to the end, and this is where... Uh, you're, you're going to be able to shine. You're going to be able to shine. Uh, and then, uh, eventually, you're going to see an HP laser jet behind me. And then, we'll start talking uh, meat and potatoes. But until the laser jet arrives, the one that I'm going to lease, we're going to have to wait and just mind our manners, do what we ordinarily do, keep, uh, keep our mouths shut, uh, cosine tiny, and hopefully, tangentially, this will rub off. That's my intent. I have no malicious ill will, but do you too?